ever since April of this year, I got started on this book, and it has been seven days a week, full time, with no time off at all, hardly at all. And there's so much work to get this thing done. So it's worn on me a lot, and that's why I've done no podcast. That's why I've done um, no sharing a video, which I still I have over 2,000 videos I've taken in the last little more than a year. So the, the, the amount of activity is growing tremendously, but I've, I haven't been public at all because of the amount of work it took to, to create this. It's and, so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so exciting. So with us today, and by now the book will be out, we have the manuscript of UFO of God. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so exciting, and it, and and it should be out now, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. By the time this airs, it will be out. Yeah. yeah. It's a That's intentional bit ahead of time, but it's 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 due out any day, and um, within a, within three days, it'll be live. I think so. But yeah, it's um, it's been a long time coming, and I'm getting back to the river there. Um, I have to to. Um, kind of see where to start with it all. There there were three main um, parts over 16 years. It's been 16 years since last month. January, yeah. Last month was a little more than 16. uh, was the 16th year and anniversary was January the the 8th. Um, In that 16 years, there were three events, major events. Now, we're not talking orbs or, or filming things or, um, you know, the paranormal. We're talking about major events. And the first was the original river event where um, I was walking up a hill away from my son and uh, three friends that were working for my dad at that time. Um, and I didn't, I came back a different person. Um, I walked mm. up the hill and walked up on these big glowing balls of fire, not flying saucers, not uh, aliens with ray guns. <laughs> um, I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> it was It was truly a spiritual thing. Mm. Um, I was calling out in prayer because I was sick and I had gone through a near-death experience, which is all in this book. Um, This book is about, uh, is more of a memoir or novel than the typical UFO book. Uh, But they got my attention that night, and um, I, I was so excited that it all happened. And... And soon to find out that the community wasn't very excited Mm -hmm. and the churches and my friends and all, they kind of ostracized me and Mm -hmm. labeled me crazy and um, made it hard for my whole entire family. And so five years later, the next monumental thing was I was ready to give up. And then the lady comes mm-hmm. at Easter, uh, on Easter of 2012. And after that, and, and if you read the book, you'll see where um, where there was a five-year period from 2007, January 8th of 07, until Easter of 2012. Uh, my family had been basically... Um, Isolated and mocked, mocked and made fun of, abused. And, yeah, my mm-hmm. children were by the uh, some of my own family members. Some of them were the worst. When you would think they would be there to to support you and help, well, mm. uh, it, it was everyone. Uh, There's a few people that came in the community that wanted to tell us that they had had experiences, but for the most part. I felt so bad about what had happened that my children were coming home crying from having kids pick on them at school, the whole class laugh at them, 
uh, calling her dad crazy. So I was ready to quit. I was ready to give up and never talk about this thing ever again. And mm. so that's what I did on um, Saturday night in April uh, 2012. Uh, it was the night of Easter. Right. Saturday morning was Easter. And then this beautiful lady comes and um, she said, you're not going to quit. This is not what you're going to do. This is your burden. You must bear. And I'm giving you a summary of kind of a nut in the shell of what happened there. Because I, I walked out that night and I shouted up to the heavens, I'm done with you. I'm never going to do this again. I'm so tired of uh, seeing my children suffer. Wow. It's all my fault. In our family, privately, we used to call this the five years of darkness. Do yeah. you remember? Yeah. Sure. You did. came up with that. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it was five years of pure darkness. Yeah. Just the, the, the hatred we received. And, and, you know, it's like for telling the truth, what truly happened to us, we, we, we just received so much abuse and so much hatred. It was like living in darkness. But it was from everywhere. Um, you know. And what do you, is that, you think that's just fear from people, people afraid of believing in that? Yeah. Um, not understanding, not knowing, not wanting to mess with their paradigm. Mm. Um, and, and that many years ago, this, this it was it was top secret in mm. the government. They were tight mouthed about it and uh, didn't like anybody talking about it. And that's what happened to us when when uh, they came and investigated the case. They they did a hack job on us. Move on. Yeah, mm. they did it intentionally, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I know they did. I have proof of it, and it nearly destroyed my family for all those years. And um, but we we managed. We well, you managed. stayed true to your word. Yeah, I never mm. I never wavered. I told them then in two thousand and eight when they came that they were angels. And they're like, well, this is just too much for us. They didn't want to hear that. And right away, here I'm in now in a position to where I have my family and our community basically ostracizing us, isolating us. And now the people that I called for help to, to help make sense of what happened has ostracized us. So here we are alone, left to the, the wolves. And so I started going out every night of my life and talking to the heavens and and asking, you know, why did you do this? Why don't come back? Can't you come back? Why did you do this and leave me in this position? Wow. And I did that every night until I just shouted out, I quit. And that's when the, this beautiful lady showed up the Easter Sunday morning and said, oh, no, um, I'm here because you're not going to quit. <laughs> um, we're going to help you, she said. I'm going to help you um, with witnesses and with your camera and other ways. And uh, as long as you do this, I'll be beside you and help you. And so I agreed. And within, what, two weeks after that, you and I were sitting in Asheville yeah. at a conference. So. And, and when that first happened, that experience with the lady, did you immediately feel your emotions change? A hundred percent. Really? Nick, it was after that that dad began to just unprompted, he would just cry and cry and cry. Wow. And there was like a year where he would just uncontrollably, it, it was like- It unlocked something. It unlocked something in him. Uh, yeah. And they're actually in, in the intelligence community that was coming to our house over and over all those years. Yeah. Um, they had a kind of like an inside joke, Chris the crier. Really? Yeah. But it was like an endearing thing. Of he, course. It, it just was so emotional to him. The experience of seeing her and meeting her, it just unlocked those emotions in him. Cried for five, six years. Yeah. Wow. And I still do when I talk about it. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to, it's it's hard beautiful. to put into words. Um and, you know, the trauma, too, talking about what happened to my family, reliving that causes mm. trauma. Sure. Seeing you guys coming up and you were there. You saw it all. Yeah, you were there. A lot of it. You know, I didn't I didn't really realize the context that 
you were feeling so defeated and mm-hmm. and down and like you wanted to quit. I don't I don't I don't remember, you know, hearing that part, but that that is that makes it so much more profound because you were at your wits end. Mm-hmm. You you were ready to hang it up and then boom, just like that, immediately a sign from the heavens. I mean it was it was a real sign, yeah. It was in person and um Boy, <laughs> and she's still there. How, how do you mean? Well, uh, after she came, and this is in the book. You read this. Anybody that reads this book will will realize what I'm talking about. Uh, this five years of darkness, 2007 until 2012, was was total darkness, fear suffering um but after she came things changed immediately really quick um you know nelly nelly uh, our dog when that happened to her that was right after the lady came in 2013 Mm. remember she came back i never talked about that very much but she came back the following easter and that's when the lady did yeah I saw her two years in a row. The third year, my niece, Stephanie, described her to us from my mother's house. Saw her come out of the front door of our house and glide out on the patio. Stephanie saw her? Stephanie and Anna, yeah. I had the recording when they called me. They were standing in Mom's front yard. at one thirty. It was one thirty in the morning. They were dog-sitting from Matthew down the street, her brother. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and Anna was eight. And that night... This is a miracle. That night, um, uh, Chris Jr. had been real sick for a month, not getting out of his bed much, not doing anything. Mm-hmm. He go to work, but he won't say much and sure. hide how sick he really was. Mm-hmm. But um, I give this all to her that night. Well, um, she, uh, Anna, and Stephanie drive home. They drive up in the mom's driveway, and now we're on a we're about a hundred yards from their driveway to our driveway apart, right? Mm-hmm. Front porch to mom's driveway. It was close to a hundred yards. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So Stephanie pulls up the mom's garage door, gets out, and and Anna goes in and gets their little dog Scrappy, brings uh-huh. him out to take him to potty, right? So she's got him on a leash, and her and Stephanie are standing there with her dog, and they look at our house, and our house is totally dark. Mm. I don't know what you guys were doing, but <laughs> usually y'all were rocking out with yeah. video games. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar and drums. Or, yeah. But for some reason, Stephanie said there wasn't a light on in the house. I don't think anybody was home. I was there. Chris Jr. was in the bed. Oh, I, I don't know. Oh. I, I honestly don't know. I can't Maybe remember. You might not have been there. I may have not have been there. might have been in my house or something. I think I was at, living at college at the time. No. Oh. I was living at Methodist University. Remember? I was not there. Oh, yeah. 13. Yeah, you yeah, would have been was, in college. Yeah. Okay, so we're, uh, it was mom and I in junior, I guess. And Stephanie drives up and says that she looks straight over at our house, how, noticed how dark it was. And, and instantly, this glowing white figure of a woman floats from out of our house through the front door, floats out on the porch. And glides down on the steps to the sidewalk and turns her head and catches direct eye contact with Stephanie and Anna. Now, they're telling me this on my cell phone. They're, they left a recording. They left a very frantic voice recording. Yeah. Oh, right. wow. Right. Like immediately Dad, after you were Dad, you were in Ohio at the time, remember? I was home that night. Oh, forget but what I said. Next morning... Next morning, Chris Jr. woke up and said, Mom, I need to go to the doctor. Yeah. And she took him to Cape Fear Valley Hospital that morning, and they rushed him by ambulance to Duke University or Chapel Hill University, Chapel Hill. where he stayed in the hospital for 60 days. Yeah. Wow. With a pick line in his heart. His kidney was, uh, was swollen infection, and... Wow. The doctor told us if he'd have waited another day, he'd have been dead. Oh, man. And I know that that experience had something to do with him making his decision to go to the doctor. No doubt. 
Oh, absolutely. Especially she came through the front door, meaning she was inside the house. Caught direct, turned her head and caught direct eye contact with Stephanie and Anna. You can hear them saying this on my phone. And then about that time, she just like a streak of light took off towards the backyard between both houses in a streak of light and just vanished. Wow. I've never heard that story before. That is incredible. The craziest part is in the voicemail. And I've heard this and we can show you after. Um, in the voicemail, there is a third voice. Yeah. Huh? There when was... Stephanie called dad, Uncle Chris, Anna's, you know, we saw this, this, the, this late, the shining lady in the yard. There's a third voice in the yeah, voice recording. Yeah, in the telephone call, yeah. there's a EVP voice that, uh, whoa, um, is it, was it like a feminine sounding voice? Mm, no. Like a man, I think. It was telling her it was safe to come outside. Oh yeah, my. It's, it's audible. Yeah. Very audible. You can hear it. In, Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is shocking I, I i never knew about that but uh, you know after 2012 the first time she came mm. um everything went into like overdrive from five years of nothing um not leaving the house i stayed in depression mm-hmm. i was dealing with rheumatoid and um you know Dealing with the community and just trying to to, to unfold, it, live with all that happened. I was so tired of it. You were being uh, crushed. Yeah. Until two weeks later, MUFON calls and asks if I do a conference in Asheville. And I hadn't talked to them in years and would have told them absolutely no. <laughs> if yeah. That hadn't have just happened. So uh-huh. I readily agreed yes. And Ryan and I took off to Asheville. Mm. And that's where uh, Dr. Pasolka, we met her. And I threw out two predictions that come out of my mouth. I didn't say it. It it really wasn't like it was from me. It was I don't know where it come from, mm. but you heard it. You were yeah. there. Yep. Uh, the the I was so excited about what had happened with the lady. They wanted me to talk about what happened on the river, mm. right? And I was so tired of telling that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it brought back so much trauma. Of course. And I had just met uh, a week or so, two weeks before this this beautiful glowing woman from from heaven or wherever she's from Mm -hmm. and she she changed my whole life it it made me a different person and i wanted to talk about her and they didn't want to hear it so they started heckling me and the the crowd and i was there what was it 50 to 70 70 people literally were shouting at him like we want to hear about the river. Don't we? Don't care about that. That's yeah. just toxic. That's that's why I always make the joke. Bloodsoe, say the line. Uh, like we've we've had that. Uh, that wow. was happening. So I, I immediately I pulled into a shell, started crying mm. in front of All the crowd. People, and I'm sitting there in horror. Out of my mouth came two things. It said, "You need to pay attention to what I'm saying." Now, get in mind, I didn't say this. It it (laughs) came through you. Through me. It said, there will be an earthquake in Baja, California, this September of a 6.8 magnitude. September, I think it said 23rd or something. It was 23rd. And and also, there'll be a a mighty disruption in the elections this November. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, Hurricane Sandy blew into New York in November, flooded the whole city, disrupted the elections up and down the whole East Coast. Wow. And there was an earthquake of 6.8 in Baja, I think, the day before, like the 22nd. So I hit it so close to the exact same magnitude. Wow. But keep in mind, it was something talking through me, the phenomenon, the lady. I knew it. I knew it was coming from her. And you you had never had an inkling of either of those things prior. It just came it right came through. right out at me. In the worst In part, front of a crowd of people. I was crying, right? In front of 70 people. Yes. Yeah. You know, I felt abused enough. And now this crowd invited me to speak, and they're heckling, heckling me. And, but anyhow... Mm. That is in the book, the whole story there. And um, 